Thank you so much for coming. I, I thought a lot about my outfit tonight. And I just want a show of hands. Who do you think that is black and white? And who do you think is the room they We can't hear you. Here's the mic. Here's the mic. Topical joke. So thanks so much for coming. My name is Catherine Harrington. I'm with the Miss Record. And we are pleased to introduce the second magazine of Innovation Iowa. It is a pleasure to be here, but we wouldn't be able to be here without our sponsors. And we want to thank tonight Jim Masterson, CEO of iEdge, and his team for hosting us in this beautiful facility. Thank you very much. We also want to thank our main sponsors for the magazine, which are Zarly Law Firm. And I saw their team tonight. There's a lot of them. If you guys want to raise your hand, I know there's a lot of people filling in and in. Thank you, Zarley Law Firm. And the Iowa Innovation Corporation and their crew. So I saw Bob Riley and a lot of you folks. There's some hands. Thank you. This year's chapter sponsors include Kevin. I know Kevin's here. Kevin, see you yeah. And John Deere, thank you so much. And Monsanto. Dave, I know you're here. A lot of people in the other room. Thank you so much to our advertisers as well. We're, we have a little twist this year, and we are presenting tonight the DuPont Pioneer Innovation Leader of the Year Award. This is the first of many years that DuPont Pioneer is going to work with us to find the most innovative person in Iowa. And tonight you'll get to meet that person. So thanks so much, DuPont Pioneer. Thank you. Solutions. Thank you. Can you hear me okay? Yeah. I wonder if it's better if I talk about it. Is there a lot of feedback? Yeah. Oh. Is it better if I just do this? Okay. Well, first of all, thank you very much, everybody, for coming. I um, I wrote a couple of notes for myself just to kind of talk through a little bit, or I have like three minutes. Um, this concept of innovation um, that we're going to talk about tonight and the award that we're going to be giving out later is a topic that I have a lot of passion for. Um, and so I, I thought maybe I, for what it's worth, I would just share a couple of thoughts. To me, um, innovation is made up of something I guess I would refer to as more of an algorithm. Um, it starts with vision. It takes a lot of passion once you find that vision. And passion, in my humble opinion, is the foundation. Um, and the thing that I would say about passion is it's a real concept. It's not esoteric. It's tangible. If you're in the room with somebody who has true passion, true vision, you can feel it. You can taste it. It makes a huge difference for the rest of that algorithm. Because without it, you have no starting place from an innovative standpoint. But that's not where it ends. It actually starts there as a foundation. Beyond that, I would add that determination. And then the most important after that is action. Because action, at the end of the day, leading to innovation, represents the element of that algorithm that I would characterize as risk. And risk. For some people, at that point, when you're at the stage of a lot of determination, you've got a really cool vision, you've decided to take action, that action represents, once you step into it, a lot of risk for you and for the organization or the idea that you're representing. That's a big step. But probably the hardest one of all of the algorithm is the completion. Because the completion typically is unknown. The date is unknown. The ramifications of what you're going to run into prior to reaching your completion are unknown. So you literally have to, in many cases, to reach the end of that journey, you have to will it. You have to will it, personally will it, from action 
to completion. And the fundamental wrapper around that is perseverance. One of the hardest things that you can possibly do when it comes to innovating a vision of yours. And so for me personally, this is a really important award because I moved here from, Iowa, from to Iowa, from Seattle, Washington, 11 years ago. And it was with that sort of a passion that I did move my family out here. We bought an RV, we moved a bunch of dogs so that we could get here because there was no other way to get the dogs out here. When the original investors in, in Iowa looked at me as I pulled into town at, with an RV, um, they didn't quite know what to make of me moving from Seattle, Washington to Des Moines, Iowa to create a company that we now call Light Edge Solutions. And so I had to tell them I was like Columbus. I burned my ships, I sold the RV, I was here to stay. So 11 years ago I did that. Today the company is executing on our vision, um, our version of innovation, innovation because the, one of the synonyms that I guess I would apply to our company um, to innovation was transformation. We transformed a local company here in Iowa to what we are awfully proud of today, Light Edge. We're 150 employees strong. Um, we were one of the first in an industry that many or most of you have heard of called cloud. Um, when we launched the vision for cloud 10 years ago, it was brand new for the most part. There was no Amazon Web Services at the time. There was no Google Cloud Beyond Consumer. We launched one of the first business grade IT hosted cloud service companies in the country. Today we're considered one of the broadest product portfolios nationwide. We built the first tier three purposely built data center in the Des Moines marketplace. Today, as you know, it's a hotbed. Google, Facebook, Microsoft. But when we did that in 2006, none of that was in place. Today we've got a data center just like that in Kansas City, Missouri, and we've just bought land in Omaha to launch the third one. We're executing on our own vision, our own innovation. And so when I speak about that algorithm, I actually do it from a place of great humility and great passion. And so for me personally, this is a, an award that I'm really humbled to be a part of. And I thank all of you for being here tonight. Thank you. Uh, we'll try it without the microphone also. Uh, my name is Jason Swanson. I'm the Director of Operations at Business Publications. Uh, one of the things that I do in my role there is I handle the, all the awards that we take nominations for with the Des Moines Business Record. That includes the 40 Under 40, which is coming up a week from tonight, so if you don't have your ticket, you can purchase those online. Uh, Women of Influence, the CFO of the Year, new this year, the Commercial Real Estate Professional. Um, and now the Innovation Leader of the Year Award, sponsored by DuPont Pioneer. Um, my purpose here tonight is to kind of give you an idea of how we came up with the criteria. Um, we had a completely blank slate. We knew what we wanted to do, but how did how did we find that person? Um, so instead of finding that person first, we found a panel of people that could come and give us their input. So we reached out to some statewide organizations um, and got some of the best and brightest people in a room and said, if you're defining innovation, what does it look like? And they helped us form uh, four criteria uh, that we were looking for when we were judging the nominees. Uh, originality of the innovation, impact of the innovation, it could be within the organization or meeting a public need, uh, the commercial impact, because it, eventually you need to take it to market or it needs to have an impact on your business that way, <coughs> and then is it something, or is the person or the organization someone that fosters a uh, culture of innovation within their company? Um, I'd like to thank those people. We promised them anonymity, so we won't point them out uh, in particular, but there are several of them here today, and I'd like to thank them for challenging us and pushing us to, I think, really come up with the kind of award that we want to have. Um, <laughs> the last thing about the criteria is we purposely tried to keep it open enough that it wasn't, it wasn't pigeonholed to a tech company. And I think we accomplished that. We had nominees from the biosciences, we had uh, medical companies, we had uh, education institutions, we even had some nonprofits. So we really got people that were looking at the innovations they were doing in their business and saw it as something that they, that they were proud of and wanted to be recognized for. So with that said, I'd like to introduce Lane Arthur, 
He is the Vice President for uh, Information Technologies with DuPont, and uh, he will present the award for us. We do it without the microphone as well, so um, if you're in the back and you can't hear me, just uh, raise your hand or pull your ear or something on. Um, thank you very much. It's great to be here in this hall. Uh, I see names of innovators around the, the top of this hall as well, uh, from Mendel to Jefferson to Balfour and others. So, um, so really pleased to be here. Jim, thank you very much for your comments around innovation and that algorithm of innovation. I think that was very insightful and, and really we see that true uh, in the place that we are. I've got some notes which are mostly facts that I wanna be sure I cover. But, um, but first of all, let me just say that um, as DuPont Pioneer, we are very pleased uh, to be able to present this award. I wanna thank the, DuPont, the Des Moines uh, business record for celebrating Iowans in this innovation. Uh, thank you very much, and how do we advance that? I'm a former member of the Iowa Innovation Council and, and have a real passion for innovation. And certainly at DuPont Pioneer, we have a passion for innovation as well. Uh, we use it to try to feed people around the world. It's been our mission for, oh, 85 years or more um, as we've tried to do that uh, globally. So I'm uh, really pleased to do that. This is the first ever award and it is designed to recognize an individual or organization for their originality, their leadership, their impact on their company, their state, and the general public through innovative concepts, processes, and products. And tonight our award winner, Dr. Charles Link and New Link uh, Genetics really emb embody this innovative spirit. Uh, 2014 was a big year for New Link Genetics. They were one of two companies the farthest along in, de in developing a vaccine for Ebola that drew worldwide attention as the epidemic hit West Africa. <clears throat> they have entered into a $50 million agreement with Merck, who has a large scale production capacity, critical for the manufacturing of the vaccine and could produce 12 million vaccines by April, pending results of phase one trials and phase three efficacy trials set for early 2015. In October of 2014, New Link entered into a $150 million licensing agreement with a drug maker, Genentech, for the development of NLG919, which is a type of cancer-fighting compound developed by New Link, and it's known as an IDO pathway inhibitor. One product in their, in their hyperacute product uh, line targets pancreatic cancer and it's currently in clinical trials on 722 patients and could be the first to market, assuming it hits milestones established by the U.S. Food and Drug Administration, and it would be the company's first product in the U.S. market. Currently, the company has 120 employees, but over the next three to five years, they anticipate expanding to 500 to 800 in two locations, Ames, Iowa, and Austin, Texas. The design of their new facilities is already underway. Clearly, New Link embodies the spirit of this award, leadership, innovation, and is driven by the need to generate a positive impact on our society. The business record and DuPont Pioneer are proud to recognize Dr. Charles Link and New Link Genetics for the first ever DuPont Pioneer Innovation Leader of the Year Award. Would you? Sixteen years in the current project, so these things don't happen overnight. The algorithm that you just went through, I thought, was excellent because that's exactly what it is. You have to be passionate, you have to have vision, but then you have to execute and you have to take risks, and that takes a lot of time, a lot of effort. But what I can tell you is that the greatest risk to an entrepreneur is not being one, not taking the risk. And people, I think, often perceive the risk to be much greater than it actually is. Our company, which now has 150 employees actually, up from 120 I just heard five minutes ago. Uh, and we're gonna be hiring probably about 70 people this year, has really focused on science, trying to make a difference for, for patients. Both Nick and I are medical oncologists by training. 
So we grew up taking care of patients in a very tough situation. But what we realized is that technology applied in new ways, basically using the immune system to try to fight cancer, can make a critical difference in people that have no other alternative. So there's the passion part of it. What we then did is organize a group of scientists to share and develop a vision they believed in, and then turn that into an execution plan that took risk, but not the risk that you would think, in the sense that terrific people with terrific ideas and energy succeed the majority of the time, not the minority of the time. Another thing that people don't understand about entrepreneurship, when you get the right people together. So we appreciate the work. It's really something for all, you know, 150 employees in the group. And their spouses. And their spouses. Sorry? And their spouses. <laughs> <laughs> and we have some of our other scientists here with us uh, today. Jay Ramsey, Gabriel Ross. You guys want to stand up? During the Ebola crisis, Jay probably averaged working 100 to 110 hours a week. And uh, in fact, he was just working on shipping vaccine off to Guinea, uh, which is the third country affected by the Ebola crisis. And the New Link vaccine was now chosen to be the lead vaccine, both in Sierra Leone and Guinea. And that's the only vaccine being used in those countries right now. So. Website. These guys are the real deal. I did before I came out here, and we couldn't have a better group of guys representing us from an innovation standpoint in 2015. So congratulations again. I'm just humbled by the fact that we got to participate in this with you guys. So, this is it. I saw a couple of kids up here with crayons, so hopefully we're not going to do something. Yeah. The, good, the best thing about Innovation Iowa Magazine is it's for you guys. This is your magazine because it highlights Iowa and Iowa innovative sectors. So we want you to use it. Send me an email, send any of us an email at the business record. We will ship quantity to you. Um, we do run up fast, so let us know. You can use it for your HR departments to recruit, to find those key people that you need for your your workforce, especially if you're trying to recruit them from outside of Iowa. This celebrates everything great about Iowa innovation. So thank you.